Hi everyone. Many times we have stories from the Bible who mention personages that actually lived lives after the biblical account that the Bible doesn't speak about. In many of these cases, for instance, there is Tekla, the first woman martyr, the proto-martyr. There is also Phoebe, the first deaconess, and there's others. Uh, that, that have extensive lives that have been written that are part of our tradition. One of these happens to be a man whom we know as the centurion. Now, if you read the Gospel of Matthew, at the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ, you find that one of these centurions was indeed present, along with others who were under him, who were, who were guarding the area around where Christ was crucified. And some of them cast lots, and you know the rest of the story. Well, this man's name happened to be Longinus. And Longinus was a man who would have a great impact on the Jews, particularly since he was a Jew himself and was from the town of Cappadocia. Longinus witnessed the crucifixion, and afterwards, as the Gospel of Matthew tells us in chapter 25, verse 47, he uttered these words, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Now, why did he say this? Because he had been witness to all the things that happened after the death of the Lord. As you remember from the accounts, the splitting of rocks, the, the tearing of the uh, curtain in the temple, the uh, sky becoming darkened, the moon um, losing its light, the sun completely obliterated, so that there was darkness across the face of the earth. All of these things had an effect on Longinus. And he came to believe that Jesus Christ was indeed the Son of God. Nevertheless, after this, he still followed the orders that he was given. And one of the things that he was told to do was to go and guard the tomb. Because the soldiers were being paid to go and guard the tomb while the Jews spread the, the rumor that somehow disciples had come in the middle of the night and the guards were sleeping and they had stolen the body of Jesus. Well, Longinus was there, and indeed the next morning, after the angels had spoken to the myrrh-bearing women and said, this Jesus is not here, he is risen. And he realized that Christ not only was the Son of God, but that he was risen also. And he wanted no part in the shenanigans that the Jews were trying to pull in order to essentially deny and discredit the idea of Christ raising, of being risen from the dead. So Longinus at that point shed all of the appurtenances and apparel of his rank. He did not want any part of it. He was not going to be a centurion anymore. And he went and he testified to all these other people, especially the Jews, that Jesus Christ was the Son of God and that had risen from the dead. Now, many people at that point went to Pontius Pilate and told him about it. And Pilate, of course, who had washed his hands of the death of the Lord, was upset by this and wanted to seek out Longinus in order to kill him, as did many of the Jews. Pilate, in fact, wrote to Tiberius Caesar and asked for a warrant for his execution, which Tiberius Caesar granted. And so at that point, Longinus, along with two other of the guards who had also witnessed these things and had um, come to belief as well, went back to Cappadocia. And he was, he was living there when he heard rumor of these men who were coming with a warrant from Caesar for his execution. Did he flee? No. Actually, he was thrilled. His life tells us that he knew that by giving up this earthly life, this imperfect life, that he was going to attain the resurrection from the dead and the splendors of paradise and would serve as a witness, as a martyr to our Lord Jesus Christ. He was very, very excited about it. And he told these other two guards as well, and they were equally excited. And so when these men came searching for him, he didn't flee. He greeted them, but he didn't tell them who he was. And he said, what what is it that I can do for you? And they said, well, we're searching for a man named Longinus. We have a warrant for his arrest. And Longinus said, well, I can tell you this. In three days, these three men are supposed to come here. And if you will stay, 
I will treat you well, and I will deliver them to you. And so the men agreed. And over the next two days, he feted them as much as he possibly could. Lots of food, lots of drink, lots of conversation, good company. And they thought, never have we seen a host as wonderful as this. On the third day, when the two guards made their way to where Longinus was staying, he told the people that were seeking after him that I am Longinus, the one that you seek. And at first these men wouldn't believe him. They said, well, why? Why, why would you say this? I mean, you've treated us so well. You've, you've really cared for us. You've sowed hospitality like, like we've never seen. How can you be him? And he says, nevertheless, it is me. I am the one that you're seeking. And this threw these men into a conundrum. They were quite distressed over what to do. Here they had a commission from the emperor himself. But they thought this was a good man, not someone that they wanted to, to murder. And so they told him, we, we can't go through with this. You go free, you go on. Longinus was upset because he felt like, well, you're denying me of the opportunity of becoming a martyr and entering heaven. Sort of reminds us of the story of St. Ignatius of Antioch when he spoke of the guards who were taking him and he implored his disciples not to interfere in any way because he was going into the contest and he knew what the reward would be. Longinus knew this also. Finally, after much imploring, he was able to convince them that they should go ahead and carry through with their commission, but that they weren't doing anything evil because it was something he desired. And so, on October 16th, the day of his commemoration, he dressed in bright white along with the other two guards, which was redolent of a baptismal garment because he had indeed been baptized by the apostles after he had converted. And he met his end. They, all three, were beheaded. Now, the bodies and the heads of the two guards were taken off by the disciples, and Longinus' body also was taken away. But the two who had murdered him were told that they had to send the head back to Pontius Pilate so that he would know for a certainty what had happened. And this they did. And Pilate took it and threw it in a dung heap, a most dishonorable end for the sacred head of one of Jesus Christ's great martyrs. But the story doesn't end there. There was a woman who had gone to the place of uh, the Holy Sepulchre years later. And she was intent on asking the Lord for healing because she was blind. And she had a young son who was leading her around. And she went to the Holy Sepulchre, and after fervently imploring the Lord to heal her, she became even more ill. And not long after that, in fact, the son reposed. And she was absolutely distraught. She couldn't understand it. Why, Lord, were you doing this to me? And lo and behold, Longinus appeared to her in a dream and said, Woman, Go to this certain place, to this dung hill. Find your way there, and I want you to dig. And you'll find something very precious. And so she did, and she dug, and she found the sacred head of Longinus, which had been miraculously preserved from any corruption, even though it was lying in a dung hill. And later on, Longinus appeared to her again and said, Take this head and bury it with the relics of your son, which the woman did. And after that, she was granted to see also Longinus in full profile with her son as well, enjoying the joys of heaven. And when she had taken the head and kissed it, she regained her sight. So a wonderful story about a great saint from pure biblical times that we should honor this man, this saint of God, Longinus, the centurion, and understand that we as well should come to a fervent faith in our Lord Jesus Christ as he has